Good morning. It's so good to have folks here this morning. Good to see you and to be together on this All Saints Day. As we start out this morning, today is All Saints Day. So we celebrate with all the people of God, those that have ever been, uh, from the Old Testament people, the New Testament people, to those all around the world, to those here that are here with us today. So let's stand up. And we will begin with all God's saints living and dead. We gather together with one heart to worship the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If my people who bear my name humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear them from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. We confess that we have not lived as your children, Father in heaven. In our thinking, speaking, and acting, we have not demonstrated to the people around us the kind of love you have shown us. We individually, as a church, and as a nation, have not done justice, loved mercy, nor walked humbly with our God. We repent and turn back to you to receive your grace and your spirit to empower us to be your people who demonstrate the glory of your name. Help us, O oh Lord. Confession can kind of be a downer. You know, we say, we look again and again, and we say, oh man, I'm a poor, miserable sinner, and it feels like a kind of a downer. But you, if you listen to the next part, it becomes something totally different. Because as you confess your sins, Jesus comes to you. Jesus who lived for you. Jesus who died for you. Jesus who forgives all of your sins. You you are forgiven because Jesus died for you. All that stuff is gone. You're new people in Jesus. You are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's celebrate that by singing the Revelation song. You can sit if you'd like. Thank you. 
you know what um, the reason that we've always done the greeting of the peace. In the early church, when people came together, they wanted to make sure that they were, were connected together before they celebrated the Lord's Supper. Because they said, you know, if you've got a, a problem with another person, you don't want to come to the Lord's table and pretend there's nothing wrong. So we would greet one another to remind one another that we're not only celebrating with God who loves us like he does, but also that we're together with one another and that we've got nothing between us. So let's look. I know you can't, we can't do the hug thing that we used to do, but find somebody, make eye contact with them, let them know that you love them, and uh, greet them with the peace of Jesus. Okay. And uh, we've got our, our children's song coming up. I don't know if you feel comfortable coming up and talking with me. Yeah, come on up then. We're going to sing a song too. Jamie. Hi, Jamie. You can sit right down here on the ground. I thought we were going to have... I think, do we have other, other kids coming? Just sit right down here. Cool. We're going to sing. This is the day and you guys can all help. Can you do actions? Okay. okay we're going to do... Okay, we're going to do... This is the day... This is the day. Can you do that? Hi, come on, Lily. Sit down right here. Sit down. Sit down right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys are going to face that way today? All right. So we're going to do this is the day. The day. Can you do that? Day. Day. That the Lord is made. Before we do that, let's pray. Open, yeah. shut, open, shut, give a little clap. Open, shut, open, shut, fold them in your lap. Dear God, help us to learn about you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Okay, I have some friends here. Let me see if I can get my friends to come out and help. All right. Sit down. Sit down so they can come out. Going to come out in a minute here. These are my friends. Hi. My name's Sigmund. Hi. Hi. My name's Rab. Hi, Rab. Good to meet you guys. Oh, Hey. You know what yesterday was? What was yesterday? Uh, okay, not so close. What was it? Uh, about baby Jesus. Oh, yeah, baby Jesus. You remember that? But yesterday, what did you guys, did anybody celebrate Halloween? Yeah, did you get candy yesterday? Hey, I, I got candy. Yeah, me too. It was great. But I heard today is another day. Today's another day? A holiday. Do you know what today is? Day. It's called All Saints Day. <laughs> All Saints Day. But I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know what that means. Hey, well, that means that God loves people from all times. People a long, long time ago and people right now. And he loves you. 
Yeah, and you. God loves every person, and we celebrate that. Hi. Hi. Okay. Yeah, I know. You see that? A lot of people think that. Yeah, I, they think, I, please don't touch me, okay? Thank you. Yeah, and so he loves all of you. Hey. Hey, I bet he loves you too. Did you know that? That Jesus loves all of you? And he loves all. Look at all those people out there. Why don't we tell them that? Tell the people. Everybody together, we're going to say, Jesus loves you. Ready? One. Help me tell. Help, help him say it. Ready? Jesus loves you. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves you. All right. Thank you. I'm going to go, okay? Me too. See you later. Can you say goodbye to the pu puppets? Bye. Bye. All right. Let's say another prayer. Let me put it back. Let's pray. Okay. Dear God, thank you that you love us and you've loved all people. Amen. Oh, we got a little owie there. You kids can go back and go to Sunday school. Okay? All right. First reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. God gave John a vision of salvation. In this vision, John sees a great multitude from every tribe and nation that praises God in his presence. This is an encouragement for us as we wait for the day when we shall all join together to praise God with one heart and voice forever. After this, I looked, and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and along with the elders and the four living creatures, they fell face down before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, Who are these people in white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. Then he told me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. The one seated on the throne will shelter them. They will no longer hunger. They will no longer thirst. The sun will no longer strike them, nor will any scorching heat. For the Lamb who is at the center of the throne will shepherd them. He will guide them to springs of the waters of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is from the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. In today's special good news, we read of Jesus' core values for his people. These blessings define us as people who live in relationship to God and his values, rather than the values of the world. When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, because your reward is great in heaven, for that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
This is a special good news of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. ever heard of um, Telemachus? Anybody ever heard of him? It was the 5th century, so about the 400s, uh, and there was a monk, and he, most of his time he spent just coming together in prayer, and uh, one day he took a trip to Rome, and when he went to Rome, he went to the Colosseum, and they still had uh, what uh, the gladiator fights, you know, the gladiator fights where the people would, would fight to the death and the, the crowd would put their thumbs up if they wanted the person to live or thumbs down if they wanted to die. And they had this huge thing around the gladiator fights because for years they had been banned for a while and then they would come back again because people enjoyed them so much. And then they would be banned for a while and come back. Well, Telemachus, he came into Rome and he saw these gladiator fights and he thought he had to do something. So he left the crowd and he went right down into the, the auditorium, the place where they were fighting. And he said, stop, in the name of Christ, stop. And the gladiators were so stunned that they stopped. But the crowd was upset because they were getting in the way of their entertainment. It'd be kind of like if somebody walked into the Seahawks game, right? Seahawks game is saying, stop this out here. And you can imagine the crowd would not be very happy with that. And so what they did, instead of having somebody tow them off, is the crowd just took it into their own hands and they threw stones at them and at Telemachus until he died. Well, the governor, the, or not the governor, the, the emperor at the time, uh, had heard about this and they had been trying to stop the, the gladiator fights and finally he said, this is enough. And there was never another gladiator fight after Telemachus stood up and did that. That's a kind of inspiring story, right? How, he, how his faith led him to do that. And you, you, you think about that, how it fits with what Jesus said. Read with me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Yeah, Telemachus definitely was a, a peacemaker. But you have to think, you know, what inspired him to do that? Where did he find that stuff inside of him to be able to go and, and stand up in that arena put his life in danger to, to stop the gladiator fights. Well, I think it's because he was connected with the peacemaker, the ultimate peacemaker. And that's what makes us peacemakers as well. We become peacemakers by being connected to the Prince of Peace, Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. And I think we can think about that a little bit because Jesus brings peace in three different ways. And we're going to talk about those three ways he brings us peace. The first one that he brings peace is this. Let's read it. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, he's God's son. And he came into our world and they took him and he lived this perfect life and they took him and they put him on a cross halfway between heaven and earth to reconcile heaven and earth, to be able to get heaven and earth back together again. By dying on that cross, he paid for our sins. By dying on that cross, he restored our relationship with God. So now we have peace with God. You never have to worry about that. You know, we kind of take that for granted. You know, you feel like, yeah, if I have something, God forgives. It's okay, God forgives. But it wasn't an easy thing to happen. In order for God to forgive, Jesus had to die. And Jesus was willing to do that, and he died to restore our relationship with God so that we know we always have peace with God. That's not new news to any of you, but it's news we need to hear over and over and over again. God restored that relationship with us through Jesus. But that's not the only peace he gave us. He also gave us another kind of peace. Read this verse with me. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. I love this picture. Can you see? Anybody see the dove in the picture? It's right there. In this big, terrible storm and all the water's coming down and the flooding is happening, the dove is safe on its nest. It knows it's found a safe spot in the rock where it can hide and hold on, right? And that's the same way it is for us. In Jesus, it doesn't matter what's going on out in the world because he also gives us peace within. It's not just peace with God, but also he gives us that peace inside of our hearts. He gives us, us peace so that we can deal with no matter what's happening in the world. And you might say, um, yeah, that sounds good in theory. You know, it, it sounds good, but very often, you know, my mind gets going and, and I just can't stop that. Very often we're carrying worry and fear and guilt and shame and we can go on and on, the things that are inside of us. And we might say, you know, I, I know that Jesus gives peace. I read it in the Bible, but sometimes I don't feel that peace inside of my heart. And when I don't feel it inside my heart, what do I do with that? Well, Jesus says, I am your peace. And so what you can do is you can let go of those things. As long as you're holding on to them, you can't have Jesus come and give you the comfort that he wants to give you. Jesus wants to say, it's okay. You know what? This world is going to pass away. <clears throat> this world is not going to be here forever, but I am, and I'm always going to be there for you. So just hold on to me. No matter what happens, I will be your peace. So he gives us peace with God. He also gives us peace within, and then he does a third thing for us. Let's read. But now, in Jesus Christ, you who are far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility. Yeah. Jesus took two groups that were separated and he brought them together. Um, yesterday I was watching this thing on, <clears throat> on that uh, Right Now Media about the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. You know, the, the wall that's still left from the foundation of the temple. And on the one side of it, you have the Jewish people, and they come, and they pray, and they're there. And then if you walk up and go on the other side of the Temple Mount, then the, the Palestinian people are up there. And there's this big dividing wall, and uh, they, they just don't understand each other. They don't get along. Well, Jesus came to break down those walls. When Paul was talking, he was talking about the wall of the temple that existed, and they found this stone actually in the temple wall. Now, you guys Greek okay or it's a little bit rusty? Maybe I should give you an English translation, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll give you an English translation in case you, yeah, your Greek is down a little bit. It says, No foreigner may enter within the barricade which surrounds the sanctuary and enclosure. Anyone who is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his ensuing death. What a nice welcoming sign. Do you think we should put that outside of our church? You know, hey, you know, come on in, you might get killed. No, man, it's not very nice at all, right? And they thought, well, we're the people of God, and nobody should come into our holy space except for us. Well, Jesus said, no, I'm breaking down those walls. Anybody can come to me. Anybody can come to me. And so he breaks down the walls of hostility, and he says, we are one people. All people are united because of what Jesus did. There's no longer any divisions like that. See, he took his love and he broke through that wall so that we can connect with people. 
And we don't have to be afraid, whether it be personal, you know, you and your family, or in our church, you know, when we have disagreements and stuff like that. He broke that all down. Whether it be stuff in the world, he breaks all of those things down. So let's review them real quickly. Jesus gives us first peace with God. And that's super important. And then he gives us peace within, inside of our hearts, so that we can live our daily lives and know that Jesus is always with us. And then he breaks down the barriers with people and he gives us peace with others. And all of those things are things that Jesus gives us so that we can be his people. But then there must be some implications to that, right? I mean, he doesn't just do that and we go home, but there's another step in the process. Because this week, what's going to happen? Anybody know what's going to be on Tuesday? Election day, right? And I can guarantee you that come Wednesday, somebody's going to be upset. Maybe everybody will be upset. I don't know. But somebody's going to be upset. And when we're in this world, where there's people that are divided and separated. We need somebody to come and be our, our peacemaker. But sometimes those problems seem really big. You know, don't they? I mean, you look at the, the division and the troubles in the world, and sometimes it just seems so big, like... Oh, what are we going to do about him? It reminds me of the story of this man that was at the Wailing Wall and he prayed every day and a journalist saw him. So they came down and they said, hey, I think you'd be a good person to interview. How long have you been coming here? He says, for 25 years I've been coming here. And he said, well, what do you pray for? He says, well, I, I pray for brother, the, the unity of all mankind and I pray for an end to terrible diseases and I, I pray for, for understanding between the, the Israeli and the and the Arab people said, wow, those are really amazing things. You pray for a lot of big things. So, so how does it feel to pray for such amazing things in our world? The man said, well, it feels like I'm talking to a wall. Well, he was talking to a wall, right? Uh, but the, the fact is sometimes we feel that way. We feel like we've been praying and praying and we want our world to be better. And then we look outside and it doesn't look like it's getting any better. It looks like things are actually getting worse. And so what do we do in that situation? Well, that's, that's where we have to look back to that ultimate peacemaker. See, Jesus has shown that peace is possible. And we can look at the cross and we can see Jesus has made peace between us and God. So we know that he can do that. Jesus has given me peace in my heart. So I know that he can do that. Pe Jesus has given me peace with other people. So I know that he can do that. So that gives me hope because I know that Jesus brought peace so now I can also be an agent of that peace. I can bring that peace to other people. I can be one of those that brings peace to others and kind of extend that kingdom and extend Jesus' peace. Not because, you know, it's like that's another thing i got to put on my to-do list. Okay, uh, this morning i got to get up, eat breakfast, do my workout, bring peace to the world. It's not that kind of thing. It's because you're connected to that ultimate peacemaker that Jesus living in you will live through you and you'll become actually an, another part of his peacemakers for the world. We are agents of peace. And then there's things that we do. Well, the first one is we pray as we pray. You know, it might feel like prayer doesn't do any good, but we're not talking to a wall. We're talking to the God who created the universe. We're talking to the God who loves us so much he sent his son to us. We're talking to the God that's promised that he is going to bring his kingdom. And it may not be in our time. You know, it may not be like tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. But he has promised that he is going to bring his kingdom. So we continue to pray, continue with faith to hold on to him and say, God, you promised to bring your kingdom, so bring it. But how does he bring it? He brings it through his people. And so the next thing we do is we go into our world and humbly we listen. We listen. And you've heard me say this before, but... It's so important. God gave us two ears and only one mouth, right? So we should be doing twice as much listening as we're speaking. And we should be trying to understand. Because come Wednesday when people are upset, people are going to need to have somebody to talk to. And we don't need to be going, ha, 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 my candidate won, or, or uh, being that kind of person. What we need to be doing is saying, you know, I'm going to love you. I don't care. You know, I don't care who you voted for. I don't care any of that stuff. What I care is that, you are a person that God loves, and I want to hear and understand your world so that I can love you. And then that listening leads us to the third thing that Jesus did, and that's called serving. Serving. You remember the story of Jesus? You know, they came together on the, for the Last Supper, and, and there wasn't a, 
a person of low rank to wash their feet. So Jesus got up himself and he, he took off his coat and he put the towel around himself and he went around and he washed his disciples' feet. As an example to us, we go into a world and we try to find those places where we can serve, where we can just, just, just give to other people. That reminds me of the story. There was a, um, a soldier and he liked to pray. They would turn off the lights in the barracks and he would go and pray. Well, his commanding officer didn't like that very much. So every night after the, the lights were off, he'd slip out of his bunk and, and pray. And the commanding officer thought it was being disrespectful. And he just, just thought this guy was off his rocker for doing that every night. So what he did is he grabbed his boots and he threw them at the guy and hit, it, hit him in the head. The next morning, the officer got up and his boots were, nice, were nicely shined and put back at his bunk. Well, this happened for quite a while as the officer continued to try to uh, intimidate this, this young cadet. And in the end, the officer actually became a follower of Jesus. See, that's what happens when we serve people with love. And as we serve people with love, then God changes people's hearts and actually brings peace to our world. We are peacemakers not because we're anything special, not because we work hard at it. We're peacemakers because we're connected to the ultimate peacemaker, the Prince of Peace, Jesus. So what have we learned? We become peacemakers by being connected to the Prince of Peace. Jesus gives us peace with God, peace within, and peace with others. Sorry about the print. I don't know why it does that. I, it would look different on my computer. Jesus has shown that peace is possible. And we are agents of Jesus' peace as we... Pray, sir, listen, and serve. Yeah, you got it. Just getting ahead of us. You know, I can't. Kim's, Kim's one step ahead. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. You didn't have the sheet. All right. Any questions or comments or complaints before we go forward? I heard that, that Lutherans won't answer that, but I, I invite you to because it's important that just like the Bereans who study the scriptures to see if what Paul was telling them was true, that we, that we really dig into God's word, and that's okay. So let's take a minute. Think about what is it that will be different in your life because you've heard this message today. What's going to be different in your life? Amen. Thank you, Betty. As we um, go on, we're going to pray together a prayer, that uh, famous prayer from the prayer of St. Francis, the peace prayer. I just think it was a good prayer to fit with this message. So let's pray together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. A creed is the way we tell the world what we believe, so let's stand and confess um, that ancient creed called the Apostles' Creed. Confess it to each other and to the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Before we go into prayers, um, got, today is All Saints Day, and I think we've had this sign outside of our church. I'm going to bring it out front. Um, and we've had it out there, but with all of the people to pray for, we're running out of space on it. So we're going to retire it, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop praying for people. But I want people to take a look at it because um, there's been some misunderstanding, but I want you to notice that there's five different police officers there. There's, uh, there's white people listed on there. There's native people listed on there. There's also um, black people and Hispanic people that are on there. There's children that were killed in violence. Um, that are listed. Some of the popular ones in the news have been on there. Uh, but we're praying for all those people that are hurting. Actually, we're praying for the families of those people that are hurting. And we put it up because it's just a hard time. And we need to pray for those who are hurting. So while we retire this outside of the church, uh, you can still see a list of people and continue to add to it on our website. Uh, if there are people that you need to, to put on that list, so that we continue to pray for those that are in hurting situations. Uh, I just ask that we continue to do that. Today's All Saints Day, so it's an appropriate day to pray for that. Let's pray together. Father, you see all of these names, but to you they're not just names. They're people and they're families, and you see the hurt in their hearts, and you see the hurt in our society and, and all of the people that are hurting. Father, we pray for your comfort and your healing. Lord, we know um, that you do hear our prayers, and we know that you bring comfort where there is no comfort. So we ask you once again for all of these people and for all the people that we haven't listed and that we don't even know about, we lift them up to you and ask for you to bring healing to the families of people that are hurting. And we ask for you to bring healing to our society. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you feel comfortable sitting to pray or standing, just get yourself into a position where you feel comfortable and can recognize that we're in God's presence. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O loving Father, you have called your people to be united in Christ. Make us one as you and your Son are one. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may stand as one people throughout history who witness boldly to your life-giving love. by political and ideological and cultural division. Babylon reigns, and many of us have been co-opted into its seductive ideology. Yet you call us to love the poor, the oppressed, the disabled, and the neglected. Lead us to walk with those who need our help. Free those caught in the web of human trafficking. Help the homeless. Send your people to help those who struggle with mental illness. Save the unborn. Give help to those who are in difficult pregnancies. Watch over the aged. Comfort the lonely. Free the addicted. Restore the incarcerated. Stop the violence in our cities and in our homes. Comfort the grieving. Spread your good news to every corner of the earth. May your kingdom come. We and your feet in our world. May we live out our vocations with joy and attitudes of humble service. 
this week as our nation participates in an election, we ask that you choose the leaders of our country that will bless our country with wise and able leadership. Whatever the outcome of the election, we pray for peace for all people in our nation to unite as one country. Teach us to love and work with all people to seek peace and justice and love in our land. Bless those who protect us, whether in the military or in the police. Especially bless Kent and Jennifer and Chief Jolly. Save all of us from the temptations to misuse our vocations for our own selfish gain. Let us uphold each individual as a bearer of your image. All that we have comes from you. You have invited us to bring our cares and our concerns to you. So we do that now. Please hear our prayers for the sick, the troubled, and all those in need, especially. And we lift up those with cancer, Lynn, as we mentioned, Travis and Denise, Dawn, Patty, Tony, Jason, and Mary. We pray for those that are sick with other things like uh, Catalina Morales with her broken hip, Kathy as she continues to struggle with this gout. Uh, we pray for Max and his serious leg injury. We pray for baby Matmat as he can continues to be in the hospital separated from his parents as he undergoes treatment and that's so difficult for his parents who have not been able to be at his side through this whole process we pray uh, for the family of, of JJ uh, where they found his body by the river and we pray that you'll be, be with Janice and with JJ's family as they, as, they, uh, as they grieve Father be with Mike Lancott who's back in the hospital we pray for healing for Mike and that you'll continue to protect him and be with him through this difficult time. Be with Josh and Coco and John as they return to Asia to serve you on November 11th and especially as they deal with uh, the new restrictions in China as they try to do that work. Lord, we pray that you'll be with our preschool as they reach out to these families. Pray that you'll keep them safe from the coronavirus and that you will allow our school to be able to touch each of those children with your love. And we pray for those we've mentioned in our hearts. with you now. Thank you for releasing them from the burden of sin and death in this life and for keeping your promise to them. We especially remember those in our community who have passed away in the past year. Del Fielberg, Irene Lundquist, and Danny Johnson. Give comfort to all those who grieve over loved ones no longer with us on earth. Give them the hope only your word can offer us. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our offering, we no longer, um, we no longer do our offering by passing a plate, but if you'd like to give an offering, there's a box by the door. But let's uh, pray for that offering right now. Father, thank you. Uh, we give you but your own. Thank you for supplying all of our needs. And as we give back to you, we pray that these gifts will be used for the furthering of your kingdom. 
and that it will be a blessing. Thank you that you supply the needs of us, but also that you supply the needs of all who are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ in the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he gave thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this to remember me in the same way also he took the cup and after they'd eaten he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said take and drink this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you did you hear that for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this to remember me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We skipped right over the Lord's Prayer, and I don't know why, but let's, let's, let's pray that prayer Jesus taught us to pray. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Welcome to the Lord's table. benediction of the Lord and we'll sing our final song. The Lord will greatly increase your love for each other and for everyone else just as we love you. Then he will strengthen you to be holy. Then you will be blameless in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all God's holy people. Amen.